still far outstrip our collective comprehension. Do you believe that you were made for more? Man begins the greatest adventure in his history. Knowing that there is a new height, a new horizon, a new possibility, a new world to discover. Well, good morning, Gateway South. How's everybody doing today? My name is John Lee. I am the Grow Pastor here, and it's so good to see all of you. We've been going through this series called Relaunch Your Life. The first week, we talked about healing. Then we talked about belonging. Last week, Eric Bryant talked about serving. And today, we are concluding our series discussing the topic of growing. There's so many ways to grow, right? We grow from the time that we're born all the way through adolescence, through our adulthood. We can grow in knowledge as we learn and we study. And if you eat too much junk food like I do, your waistline can grow. Um, You know, early in the pandemic, it was really hard for me to to exercise and to be active. I don't know if y'all remember, but a lot of the gyms shut down, including the gym that I was a part of. So I had to try to work out from home. And you know, I don't own any workout equipment, any weights. So I had to just find whatever I could find at home to lift weights. And you know, some of those items that I used as weights were very unorthodox. Some were very fluffy and furry. That's my poor dog, Avery. I actually got him right before the pandemic hit, and he's been such a blessing in my life. I don't know if I've been a blessing in his, though. As soon as I brought him home, he was probably like, what kind of home did I end up in? Somebody bring me back to PetSmart. (laughs) But in addition to growing our muscles and growing physically, we grow spiritually. As grow pastor here at Gateway South, I get the honor and the privilege of working closely with our community groups, our life groups, and our networks, and our group leaders. And I will mention some of our groups today and even share with you how you can grow here at Gateway. But what I also wanted to do today, what God has also put on my heart as a brother in Christ, is to share with you some of the things that I have personally learned about spiritual growth and even some of the ways that I have grown personally in my relationship with the Lord. And the first thing that I have learned is that spiritual growth begins with a relationship with Jesus. A relationship with Jesus is the soil for our spiritual growth. College was a very adventurous and colorful time in my life, to say the least. Was it an adventurous time for anyone else in here? uh, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, as many of you know, and I went to LSU for the first two years of college. And my freshman year, I I lived in a dorm. Uh, The dorm was called Taylor Hall. I lived in this tiny studio dorm room. And my first semester of college, I had a really early morning class. The class met at like 7.30 a.m. I think it was business calculus or something. And one day before I went to business calc, I decided I wanted to eat some breakfast. So I ate the breakfast of champions. I ate a Pop-Tart. Um, The only thing was I didn't have a toaster in my apartment, or in my dorm room, rather. The only thing I had was a microwave. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just put the Pop-Tart heated up in the microwave for a little bit. You know, it won't be toasted, but at least it'll be warm. And then I I went about getting ready for the morning. I don't know if it's because it was so early in the morning and if I was still half asleep, but I accidentally forgot that I put the Pop-Tart in the microwave. And not only that, instead of putting the Pop-Tart in the microwave for only a few seconds, I put in the, pop, the Pop-Tart in the microwave for a few minutes. Suddenly, I started smelling this burning smell. I was like, oh no, my Pop-Tart! And I ran to the microwave and rushed to take the Pop-Tart out. And I was like, Phew. oh, that was close. I almost burned down the building. The only thing was that the Pop-Tart burned so much in the microwave that when I opened the microwave door, all of the smoke came out of the microwave and started filling up my dorm room. I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? It was exactly how I envisioned my morning started. And then the unthinkable happened. And there was so much smoke in my dorm room that it set off the fire alarm in the entire dorm building. Suddenly this blaring, blasting, reverberating, awful siren noise started echoing through this huge building. And again, this was at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. I was like one of the few students who was up at this time. And I was panicking, so I ran outside of the dorm room, not knowing what to do. 
And I was so embarrassed and I was so afraid of the backlash that I would receive from probably waking up the entire building. And then it was like a scene from a zombie apocalypse movie. All of these students started exiting the building one by one, still wearing their pajamas, rubbing their eyes because they were so tired and they were angry and they were upset. And they're like, why is the fire alarm going off this early? We used to practice fire alarms never at the crack of dawn. It was usually in the afternoon or in the evening. They were like, why is this going off? Who did this? And I was like, yeah, who did this? Gosh. And I was like, what time is it? Oh, I got to go to business, Cal. Bye. And I snuck off into the distance. I was so embarrassed. I was traumatized after this moment. And it was one of the adventures that I experienced in college. College was an adventurous period of my life. But another reason why college was such a unique period of my life is because it's when I first accepted Jesus and when I first became a follower of Jesus. I grew up going to church, but I only went because my family went. I didn't go because I desired to go. I didn't have a genuine relationship with God. And when I was in college, I wasn't going to church at that time, but I had a friend whose name was Phil. He's still one of my best friends today. Phil was a Christian. We would hang out and have spiritual conversations. And one day, I was compelled when I was in my dorm room to just get on my knees in the middle of my room to make a prayer to God, something I'd never done before. I was the biggest knucklehead in the world around that time. But I prayed to God, I prayed to Jesus, and I invited Jesus into my life and into my heart. My life was completely changed. I completely changed. I changed almost instantaneously. I had now received a relationship with the living God, with the God of the universe. And after receiving that relationship, with the God of the universe. I grew dramatically. Not only that, I delighted in my relationship with God so much. I delighted in his word. I would read his word and spend so much time soaking it in and delighting in it. God would speak to me in powerful ways. You know, there's, all types of different growth, right? But what I think is beautiful about spiritual growth is that it hinges on and starts with relationship. A relationship with a friendship. It starts with being connected to God, abiding in God. With other types of growth, We can expect certain results, right? Certain outputs if we put in certain inputs. And with spiritual growth, yes, we need to all be responsible for our spiritual growth. There is an intentionality that is needed in order to continue to grow and to be a good steward of the gift of faith that God has given us. But what I'm trying to point out here is the beauty of spiritual growth and how it begins with relationship. In John 15, Jesus says this, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. In order for us to grow spiritually, we must be connected to the vine. We must be connected to Jesus. Let me ask you, what do you think this passage shows us about God? What does it say about God's character and God's nature? What are the implications of this passage? Well, one thing 
that I believe this shows us about the living God is that God desires intimacy with his creation. I am the vine and you are the branches. Remain in me, God says, and God desires. God wants to be intimately connected to his creation, not to boss us around, not to order us around, but because he loves us so much that he wants to have deep intimacy with every one of us. He wants to be an integral and vital part of our everyday lives. God wants to have a friendship with us, a romance with us. He doesn't want to be distant and far. That's not who God is. Our God wants to be connected to us, and he wants to be close and near to us. Fundamentally, the God of the universe is a relational God who wants to have a relationship with you and who wants you to enjoy a relationship with him. And as we're intentional about our spiritual growth, once we receive a relationship with the living God, this creates opportunities for us to delight in God and enjoy him and feast in him every single day of our lives. In 1 Peter, it says, like newborn babies crave spiritual milk so that you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. I love that phrase, tasted that the Lord is good. Do you think about God that way? Do you think about experiencing God that way? Tasting that he is good? How sweet your word is to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth, the psalmist says. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight in me, God says. You know, as Grow Pastor, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about community groups and life groups and helping our people connect into these groups is because in the context and unique setting of a group, I'm talking about the potlucks, the fun and the games, the intimate study of God's word, the sharing of prayer requests, and the beauty of seeing those prayer requests answered. We experience the beauty and the love and the goodness of Jesus in a way that you can't experience anywhere else, not alone, not even here on a Sunday. In other words, I'm passionate about groups because I'm passionate about helping people experience and enjoy the beauty of Jesus. God is an intimate God who wants us to enjoy him. But sometimes in our relationship with the living God, and as we grow throughout our lives, growth can be very difficult and even painful. Growth is good for us, can be, but it can be challenging. Let me ask you, how have you grown over the past year and a half? What have been some of the most challenging times for you over this past year and a half? And how has God maybe wanted to use those challenges to help you grow. One of the things that I've struggled with throughout my life um, because of different and multiple experiences of rejection that I experienced growing up is really knowing my true value and my worth. I've come a long way in this area of my life and I've grown significantly in this area thanks to God. But you know what? I'm still growing in this area of my life every single day, every single minute, every single second. And sometimes this growth is really hard. You know, I lived on the East Coast for about five years, and I never imagined, though, that the most snow I'd ever see in my life in this country would be in Austin, Texas. The snow apocalypse was not fun. I lived in an apartment on Southwest Parkway in Southwest Austin, and like many of you, um, the Monday after the heavy snowfall, we lost power and water. And I actually went to stay with Ricky Echiona and his family for about four days, and I was there till about Thursday of that week, checked back with my apartment in Southwest Austin to see if we had power or water yet. We still didn't have power or water. 
And at that point, I considered driving over to Houston because my older brother lives in Houston, and he had power and water at his place by this time. He had also lost power and water like we did earlier in the week, but he had it by this time. But because the roads were slick, my brother didn't want me to drive over there to Houston. So without even telling me, he actually booked me a hotel room. So kind of him, such a loving and kind gesture. The only thing, though, was that because there were no hotel rooms available in the Austin area, the only hotel room my brother could reserve for me was one in Round Rock. I was very, very, again, touched by my brother's kind gesture, and I was grateful to have power and water, but I was in this hotel in Round Rock, this random hotel, all by myself for a few days, and you know what? It was kind of tough. I felt isolated. I was separated from all of my friends and all of my community here in the Austin area. And it was really, really lonely. But you know what? One day, when I was pent up and all alone in this random hotel in Round Rock, I went to the living area of my hotel room and I opened my Bible, and I sat down, and I turned to the book of Isaiah. And God spoke to me in such an intimate and personal way. And he basically told me and reminded me that he created and formed me because of that, I have an inherent value and worth, and my identity is completely wrapped up in him. This encouraged me so much. And it helped me to grow significantly, not only in the context of this entire pandemic season, but it was one of the biggest moments of growth in my entire life. I knew that, but again, God deepened this understanding in me. And he did it in a very personal and intimate way. If the snowpocalypse hadn't happened, though, I wouldn't have ended up in that random hotel in Round Rock by myself. By the way, after staying in this hotel for a few days, we still didn't have power or water in my apartment complex. So I was like, man, I've had enough. I'm getting out of this state. So I went to Louisiana and I stayed in Louisiana with my parents for five days. We then got power and water in my apartment. And I was like, thank you. The circumstances of the snowpocalypse weren't fun. They weren't ideal. But again, if it hadn't happened, I wouldn't have ended up in that hotel room. And if I didn't end up in that hotel room in Round Rock, I maybe wouldn't have experienced God speaking to me in this intimate and personal way that helped me grow significantly. What challenges are you going through right now? And again, how is God maybe wanting to use those challenges to help you grow? This past year and a half has been, it's been so challenging, and specifically because it's been one that's resurfaced some of our old wounds, right? But I think a silver lining from this season is that as these wounds in our lives and our souls have resurfaced. It gives us an opportunity to pursue even more healing in these wounds so that we can experience even more wholeness in our futures. Growth can be painful, but it's good for us. When we lift weights, we are literally breaking and tearing apart the muscles in our body. But after our muscles heal and recover, they grow and become stronger. A good friend of mine named Gio once told me, you know, John, when you break a bone in your body or you break your arm and you go to the doctor, sometimes the doctor actually breaks the bone again so that it'll heal, fully heal or heal properly. I mean, in our society, we even use the term growing pains, right? 
As long as we got each other. We got the world spinning right in our hands, baby, you and me. We gotta be the luckiest dreamers who never quit dreaming. Everybody! Just kidding. Did anyone grow up watching the show Growing Pains? Growing can be hard and painful. But God doesn't want us to grow so that we will experience pain. God wants us to grow because he wants us to become the best version of ourselves and become the person that he created us to be. God wants us to grow so that we will actually experience the life and the freedom of being a child of God. In James, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance or steadfastness or perseverance have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. God wants us to be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Similarly, in Hebrews, it says, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. I'll be honest with you. I don't really like that word discipline in this verse. I'm not a huge fan of that word. I'm like, oh, discipline. I love that word. I want to name my first child discipline. No, I don't really like that word. But I did a little bit of research, and you know what I found? That one definition of this word is instruction that trains someone to reach full development. And when I read that, I was like, huh, all right, all right, I can get down with that. Let's go. Full development, my full potential. That's a little bit more palatable. I like that. Come on. God wants each of us to reach our fullest potential and our full development because he loves us so much and wants the best for us. God is a God of life. He wants us to live the fullest lives possible. Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is who our God is. He wants us to experience abundant life. Maybe you're thinking, I like how things are in my life right now. I like where I'm at. Why do I need to grow? I get that. But here's the thing. If we aren't growing, it means we're staying in the same place. It means we're not moving. It means we're stagnant. It means we're not moving an inch, like being on I-35 at 5 p.m. You're not going anywhere. (laughs) And Get this, sometimes, whether we realize it or not, we're not in a very good place. And we don't realize that things can be even better. We don't realize that we can be in an even better place, that life can be even better, that we can experience even more in life, more joy, more peace, more wholeness and more freedom. Why drive a scooter when you could drive a Lamborghini? Why eat a sandwich when you can eat filet mignon? Why make a Pop-Tart for breakfast when you can go across the street to Chick-fil-A or McDonald's and not worry about burning your whole building down? And the food is made for you. There's even a dollar menu. Growth can be hard. But God wants us to experience growth so that we can experience more life. I want to be very clear about something, though. Many of us have experienced horrible things throughout our lives, and God's heart breaks for that. And maybe you're thinking right now, are you saying, John, that that happened in my life because God wanted me to grow? No. I'm not. God is not the source of any evil that has happened in our lives. The scripture is very clear that there is absolutely zero, no evil in the God of this universe. James 
says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one. God is not the source of the evil you've experienced in your lives. That's the enemy. But even though we live in a fallen world, the beautiful thing about God is that he can use what was meant to harm us for good. God's heart for us when it comes to our growth is that each of us would become the person that he created us to be. And again, to experience the life and freedom that come from being a child of God. God loves his children too much to let them stay the same. God wants his children to thrive and to flourish. That's how much God loves us. But we don't have to grow alone. In fact, that's why Gateway exists, to help each of you grow in your spiritual journeys. And here at Gateway, we want you all to experience three things. We want everyone to first be inspired to take a next step in their spiritual journey. That's why we have these inspired services or these Sunday services and our beautiful music and our messages and our volunteers so that you can experience and get a taste of the beauty and the goodness of Jesus and be inspired to take a next step in your spiritual journey. Not 10 steps, not even five steps, but what's just one step that you can take to continue to grow in your spiritual journey? We always have at least one next step. But after you're inspired to take that step, our heart for you is to connect into community because none of us can grow alone. We need each other. And we have four different types of groups here at Gateway that you can connect into. We have recovery or restore groups where you can find healing. We have serve networks, like our Bridging Neighbors Network that serves the homeless We have serving teams here on Sundays. We have community groups where you can find friendship in the church and life group where you can grow spiritually and learn about multiplication and how to make more and more disciples. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of the life groups and community groups and the life group and community group leaders here at Gateway South that I work closely with because let me tell y'all, they are amazing. They are amazing. I think about Sarah Crippen who leads a 50s plus life group online, even throughout this pandemic, they've met every single week, providing a space for people to connect and grow. I think about Sherry and Ken Moscow, who lead a multi-generational community group. Their group started right when the pandemic hit. They've met online for the past year and a half, but get this, a few weeks ago, they had a fun outing at a state park, and they met each other in person for the first time. Isn't that beautiful? I think about Scott Artman, who leads a men's community group. Get this, every Wednesday at 6 a.m., bright and early at 6 a.m. every week to provide a space for men to connect and to grow. There's a picture of me visiting Scott's group one morning. That's also the last time I woke up for something at 6 (laughs) a.m. Lee Higgins and Will Arnicky lead a men's community group, and they do a phenomenal job of serving and ministering to the men in this church, and helping them grow. Jennifer Higgins, she led an anchor woman's life group that just concluded after meeting for a few years. Amber Andrade and Tara Browder lead a woman's life group. Nancy Moore leads a women's community group. Joe Ricks leads a men's community group. Ashley and Peter Shank and Philip and Brittany Dunning lead a life group for Austin transplants. Lisa Keegan, who lives in Bastrop, leads a life group for people all over the Austin area. We have amazing groups here at Gateway South that you can connect into. Another group that maybe you haven't heard much about, but it's a fantastic one, is our Spiritual Running Partners groups. What is a Spiritual Running Partners group? It's very simple. It's groups of three to five men or three to five women who agree to be intentional to help each other grow in their relationship with God, no perfect people allowed style. How do you find a running partner? Easy. All you do is just look around you to see who is running after Jesus at the same pace as you. Pray and ask them if they would consider meeting together as a group. 
And we would love to support your spiritual running partners groups. We have resources here that we would love to send you. Contact us or you can go and get these resources yourself by going to the website you see on the screen. And if you form a spiritual running partners group, let us know. We want to cheer you on. Send us an email at grow at gatewaychurch.com. And yes, it's spiritual running because I know some of y'all are like, I don't do any running. There's so many great groups that you can connect into here at Gateway South. And we'll all start at different places, and that's totally okay. But our hope as a church is that eventually every person will experience all four of these types of groups to connect into because they're all essential for us to grow and to get the most out of our relationships with Jesus. But after we're inspired and after we connect, our hope is that eventually every person will take and share what they've experienced in Jesus, what they've learned in Jesus, and help others to do the same. In other words, we hope that, we hope that every person will lead in some capacity, will mentor and bless others, or evangelism and discipleship if you grew up in the church. Jesus said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You see, at the end of the day, the reason God wants us to grow and to grow as disciples of Jesus is because he wants us to become more like Jesus. What is the goal of spiritual growth? It's becoming like Jesus. Jesus is perfection. Jesus is completion. Jesus is our highest potential. God wants us to become more like Jesus and to help others become more like Jesus as well. You see, when Jesus died and he rose again from the dead, he did that so that he could give each of us new life so we could have new life in him. And today, right now, God is doing something. He's doing something in the world. He's doing something in Austin, Texas. He's doing something in Gateway South. God is on a mission, the missionary God. What is God on a mission to do? He is on a mission to restore all of his creation, to restore all of us, to bring us wholeness, and to transform each of us into the image of his son, Jesus. In Romans, Paul writes, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, God's will is to transform each of us into the image of his son, Jesus. And God's will is that each and every day of our lives, as we go through the journey of our lives, through the ups and downs, the peaks and the valleys, that we would become more and more like Jesus, the creator of the world. And what's beautiful is that God lets each of us be a part of his redemptive work of redeeming his people around the world. I've had the privilege of becoming friends with Jason Berkman, who goes here to Gateway South. Jason's from Southern California. He owned a few businesses, but unfortunately, during the pandemic, he lost those businesses and decided to move here to Austin, Texas. I met Jason at my dog park in my previous apartment complex, invited him to Gateway Church. He eventually started becoming a regular attender to my community group. And because of the amazing and beautiful work of God that God has done in Jason's heart over the last two years here at Gateway in my community group and through his personal life, and because of Jason's own desire for his personal growth, Jason recently became a follower of Jesus. Yeah, you can clap for that. Not only that, Jason decided that he wanted to make the ultimate expression, the public display of the life change that he has experienced by becoming a follower of Jesus. He decided he wanted to be 
baptized. A few weeks ago, Jason and I went to Lady Bird Lake, and we baptized them, and it was beautiful. I loved how natural and organic it was. We just baptized them in the middle of the lake. There were kayakers and bystanders all around us. One person even watched us as we baptized him. And Jason is a videographer and a photographer by trade, and he made a video of his baptism we're about to show to you. Watch this. Looking up at a tree, I remember how it started. You baptized. I was lost in a dream when the fire in my heart said an open road. I've already found some light, the feeling grows. And if that sounds alright, I'm breaking. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I want you all to know that I'm not nearly as uncoordinated as I looked as I was stepping into that lake. True story, someone there told me the ground was very slippery, so I was trying to be very careful. I know I looked like I was doing a robot in the water or something. I'm actually very athletic. I played a ton of frisbee in high school, and I'm excellent at putt-putt. When we grow in Jesus, we can help others experience the same. And again, God is so gracious and beautiful in that he lets us join him in this work. As you relaunch your life, what's one step that you can take today to continue to grow, to become more like Jesus, and to help others do the same? Think about that as we listen to this next song.